parang isa siyang tapunan ng mga kick out. Nung araw nga, ah, pag sinabing tagaya nga, alam nyo ba ang ibig sabihin, bulak-bulero, hindi nag-aaral. Kukunti na yung estudyante namin, ang dami pang wala. Iniisip nila para tambakan ng mga matitigas ang ulo. The School of Last Resort. This was what other schools called Dr. Yanga's Colleges Incorporated, or DYCI. Students were known as class-cutting misfits who defied teachers and administrators. Considered a recycle bin for repeaters and kickouts, DYCI hit an all-time low when its student population plummeted from 2,800 in the 1980s to just 523 in 2001. Determined to turn things around, the newly appointed school director and principal, Mr. Michael Yanga, began improvements on school administration. Nung kami nasa Tagaytay, hinamon kami ni Sir Michael. Ang sabi niya, kayo ba'y naniniwala na ang para ng Dr. Yangas ay magiging number one sa buong Bulacan? Driven by the desire to harness the innate skills and mold the character of each student, they emphasized the values of God-centeredness and commitment to excellence. As the core operations of the school stabilized, the administration trained its eyes on a bigger goal, to create an innovation that would set itself apart from other schools. Frequent absences were a major problem in DYCI. Upon further investigation, Mr. Yanga found out that students were always in computer shops, which kept them from focusing on school. It dawned on him that he could redirect this interest in computers to a fun but more educational route through LEGO Robotics. Robotics education was included in the curriculum for grade 4 for fourth year high school, and all students were given hands-on experience through robotics kits. In 2006, the school started joining competitions. The DYCI robotics team brought prestige and pride to the whole country by earning a number of awards in three separate World Robotics Olympiads. This paved the way for DYCI to be the first ever robotics excellence center in the province of Bulacan. It also led to major changes in the curriculum as teachers used robotics to develop skills in subjects like mathematics, science, technology, and even English. For instance, Mr. Yanga noticed that students had trouble expressing themselves in English, which affected the way they presented their robots. He implemented a year-round English-speaking campaign complete with awards, recognitions, and a TV broadcasting project that encouraged students to improve their English skills. Two of the things that set DYCI students apart from others were their values and attitudes. DYCI taught me that a successful person not solely depends on one's physical attributes, mental capacity, or even the social world where he or she belongs. But most importantly, the inner being that drives you to serve God. Not wishing to exclude anyone, DYCI decided to use the term God-centered so that all students, whether they were Catholic, Protestant, Iglesia Ni Cristo, or otherwise, could relate to and engage in the spiritual activities conducted by the school. At dahil sa kanilang formation, unti-unti nagiging malawak ang pangunawa ng mga bata, hindi lamang sa kanilang pananampalataya, kundi sa kanila ring pakikitungo, sa kanilang kapwa mag-aaral, sa kanilang pamilya at sa kanilang komunidad. The strength of its curriculum and spiritual formation propelled DYCI to greater heights. The school that was once considered a recycle bin for repeaters and kickouts had become a source of national pride and inspiration. Now the biggest private school in Bulacan, with 2,250 students, it lives by the motto, more than a school, a family. Together as a family, members of DYCI continue to push the envelope, proving that even a school of last resort can make it to the top.